Borelli. Present. Botcher. Brennan. Here. Brewer. Here, again. <laughs> Brooks Powers. Present. Caban. Carr. Present. De La Rosa. Dinowitz. Farias. Present. Felice. Present. Gennaro. Here. Gutierrez. <clears throat> Presente. Hanif. Present. Hanks. Present. Holden. Here. Hudson. Present. Jordan. Present. Joseph. Present. Kagan. Present. Krishnan. Present. Lee. Present. Lewis. Blessed and present. Marte. Present. Mealy. <clears throat> Council Member Mealy. Menon. Present. Moya. Present. Narcisse. Present. Nurse. Ose. Paladino. Powers. Present. Wrestler. Riley. Present. Rivera. Presente. Salamanca. Present. Sanchez. Present. Schulman. Present. Stevens. Present. Ong. Present. Velasquez. Present. Vernikoff. Present. Williams. One. Jaeger. Here. Thank you. Mr. City Clerk, we have a quorum. Seeing that a quorum is present, I now request that all council members please stand for the oath of office. <coughs> all rise. Oh, council members, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, I Darlene Neely. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York and the Charter of the City of New York and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Council Member in the State Your District, please. In the borough of in the county of in the city of New York, according to the best of my ability. Council members, congratulations. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by the Reverend Dr. Elaine M. Flake, Senior Pastor at the Greater Allen AME Cathedral of New York, located at 110-31 Floyd H. Flake Boulevard in Jamaica, Queens. Please rise. All rise. Amen. Almighty God, we come today in celebration for the many blessings that we have experienced, not only in our lifetimes, but certainly in these last two years. 
God, we thank you that we can all testify that we are still standing. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy that has been manifested in all of our lives. We thank you, God, that the city of New York is still standing. We pray your blessings upon each and every citizen who lives in this great city. We pray, God, that you will continue to pour out your blessings on every borough, every community, every family, so that we might be able to declare that God is on our side. We thank you, God, for these who have been selected, elected, to serve the city of New York. We pray blessings on the New York City Council. We pray, God, that their agenda will be your agenda and that the people that they serve will look upon them and call them blessed. And God, we ask right now that as they embark upon these next few months of service, that you will indeed make their way easy. We thank you, God, for the one who will lead the city council. We pray, God, that you would use her mightily. And God, we give it over to you because we know without you, we are nothing. And so we ask now that as we proceed in 2022, that your will will be done, that this city will be great, not just because of the leadership, but because this city council has been endowed with supernatural power from on high. We claim it is done, and we declare that we cannot make it without you. We declare that we never would have made it without you, and we give you praise. Amen and amen. Thank you, Reverend Flake. I now recognize Councilmember Williams to spread the invocation on the record. It is an incredible honor to be delivering these remarks for Reverend Dr. Elaine M. Flake, who currently serves as the senior pastor of the Greater Alanay AME Cathedral. The church is an anchor in our community. Two of my colleagues, Southeast Queen's sister, Speaker Adrian Adams and Councilmember Sylvina Brooks Powers are members of this church that, continue to, that continues to be a beacon of hope for the 27th Council District and beyond. The Reverend Margaret Elaine M. Flake has been impacting the many lives she touches at the Greater Alamy AME Cathedral for over 45 years. She served as co-pastor with her husband, the Reverend Floyd H. Flake, until May 2020. Upon the retirement of Dr. Floyd Flake, she received an appointment as senior pastor and continues to dedicate her life to the betterment of others by leading in Christian education, evangelistic, and outreach ministries. She is also a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, I won't hold that against her, the Lynx <laughs> National Council of Negro Women. Reverend Margaret Elaine and Flake continues to be recognized as a powerful preacher, teacher, and role model with a gift for, with a gift for reaching worshiper, worshipers of all ages. Thank you, city clerk. I would like to thank the Reverend Dr. Elaine and Flake for being here today, and I make a motion for unanimous consent to spread the invocation in full upon the record. So ordered. We now move on to M1 of 2022, the continuation of the 2018 to 2021 Rules of the Council. I now recognize Council Member Brooks Powers to make a motion regarding the rules of the Council. I make a motion that pursuant to Section 46 of the New York City Charter that the 2018 and 2021 rules of the Council as amended and including the April 22nd, 2020 suspension of certain in-person requirements in light of the COVID-19 pandemic be continued and in effect until new rules shall be adopted or set rules shall be otherwise amended or modified. I will now call for a voice vote on the motion. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 
abstentions. The ayes have it. Thank you. We now move on to the nomination of the Speaker, M2. I hereby open the floor for nominations for the office of the Speaker of the City Council pursuant to Section 44 of the Charter for the term commencing January 1, 2022 and terminating December 31, 2023. I now recognize Councilmember Brooks Powers. Good afternoon, everyone. Today marks the start of a new chapter for the New York City Council. Looking around the chamber, it's easy to see how historic this council class is. New Yorkers have sent a record 31 women to the City Council. to represent them, and our membership is more racially diverse than ever before. And today, as a remarkable reflection of that diversity, we will elect the first African American to lead the New York City Council. <laughs> But there, but there are challenges ahead. Our city is facing a public health emergency, the likes of which we have never seen before. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to devastate our communities and expose the deep inequities of our society. New Yorkers need accessible health care, safe schools for our children, streets free of violence, and economic opportunity for all. In times like these, we need dedicated leadership. We need a speaker who can lead this council to deliver on the promises we made to our fellow New Yorkers. In times like these, we need Councilwoman Adrian Adams. Adrian is not just my colleague, but my sister and friend. Throughout our relationship, I have seen the type of leader she is. I've seen how her every action is informed by her faith, which is the guiding star of her moral compass and the bedrock of her commitment to public service. It's that commitment which has made Adrienne a true pioneer among the greater Southeast Queens community. Whether through her work in educational equity, her service to residents of Community Board 12, or her leadership on the Public Safety Committee and the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, Adrienne has been a champion for all New Yorkers throughout her career. As a member of the Divine Nine, she truly embodies the mission of her sorority, which is, service to, which is to be of service to all mankind. She is a natural coalition builder, capable of finding common ground and ensuring that everyone is heard in the process. This is how I know Adrienne Adams is a leader who will meet the moment who will truly rise to the challenge before her and build a fairer, safer, and healthier New York City. I know with Adrienne Adams at its helm, the council will be in good hands to make great strides in service of all New Yorkers. And with that being said, it is therefore my great honor to nominate my friend, my colleague from the great 28, Councilwoman Adrienne Adams as speaker to the New York City Council. Thank you. I now recognize Councilmember Ayala. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be here with you all today making history. 
I have had the pleasure of working with Councilmember Adams during the last four years, and I know her to be a thoughtful <coughs> leader. I know that Councilmember Adams will lead this body with integrity and compassion, and I am proud to second the nomination of Councilmember Adrian Adams for Speaker of the New York City Council. The future is uncertain, but I am confident that with Adrian Adams, uh, the job will get done. I look forward to serving with you, and I hope and helping you lead this body in a way that makes all New Yorkers proud. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. I now recognize Councilmember Brannon. Thank you. Um, I've never been more proud today to be one of 51 in the City Council with this awesome privilege and responsibility. Um, it is easy to be a leader during good times, but this job calls for us to be leader during all times. Um, Adrienne Adams, I like to call her double A, is my sister, and I am so proud that she is gonna lead this council with a steady hand and make sure that the neighborhoods and the communities that have been historically ignored uh, and underserved for too long are brought to the front of the line. And I am proud today to nominate Adrian Adams as our next speaker of the city council. I now recognize council member Powers. Thank you. Uh, today I'm immensely proud to be nominating my friend and colleague, council member Adrian Adams to serve as the next city council speaker. This marks a tremendous moment for the city council and all of New York City as we finally are welcoming a new groundbreaking class of council members, the most diverse in the history of the city council. And all of us have a major responsibility that lies before us, tackling a public health crisis, guiding the city through an economic crisis, addressing the long-term challenges that face our city and nation, and being a leader on all the issues that come to our front door. And now more than ever, the city council needs a strong and experienced leader who is ready to, ready to lead us as we tackle those unprecedented challenges. Someone who can bring people together, deliver results, and help us build back a better New York that is stronger and more just than ever before. And I am immensely confident this is my friend and colleague, Councilmember Adams. I will skip the rest of my long, long statements, but I will say for that reason and many more, it is an honor to nominate Councilmember Adrian Adams to become the next speaker of the New York City Council. I now recognize Councilmember Brewer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I am very honored to be one of the members to nominate Councilmember Adrian Adams to be the Speaker of the New York City Council. Having ser served under two speakers and knowing the importance of this position, especially at a time of great challenges, I am very heartened by Adrian Adams' style of leadership. Her private sector background as a corporate trainer in the highly competitive business world has helped to prepare her for our contested political environment. She also obtained the professional credentials to train childcare workers and managers, a group of individuals whose importance to our city is often overlooked and is incredibly important. And as a member and chair of a Queens Community Board, she used these skills and experience to address local issues and build consensus, I know. I was a member of my community board, and for the last eight years, I supervised 12 community boards and the neighborhood challenges that they address, as well as the awful legal and management issues that they pose. In the council, Adrian Adams focused on the critical problem of public safety as chair of that committee, and she co-chaired the Black, Latino, and Asian caucus. This immense background reveals her to be a strong, capable and an experienced leader who has a proven ability to bring people together and solve problems. I believe she will be receptive to the wonderfully diverse voices of our new council, and she will be able to make the council a strong and unified body in shaping city policy. The debate over who should lead the council highlighted issues of gender and race, 
but a majority of us supported the wonderful Adrienne Adams because she is able to unify us around the idea of a speaker who would listen to and re represent everyone. I'm very honored to be one of the people to nominate Adrienne Adams to be the speaker of the New York City Council. Thank you. I now recognize Council Member Moya. Thank you. Today, uh, we embark on a brand new legislative session with a council as diverse as the city that we all love. We have members uh, elected to public office for the first time, and we have returning members, and we have some pros from Albany joining a new legislative body. And of course, we have Gail, who's done it all. <laughs> the, the people of this great city went out to vote for a city we deserve, a city that doesn't leave behind the most vulnerable and creates opportunities for people to thrive not just to survive. So we have been called upon by the people of this great city to represent them, to protect them, and to empower them. We are together staring down a great opportunity to build on the successes of the previous council and lift the entire city out of the struggles this pandemic has caused, leaving no New Yorker behind. So here we are with the historic council, the first majority women, and with the next speaker, uh, poised to be a woman and the first African-American speaker of this body, I am honored to be part of this body and to have worked alongside such an incredible colleague like Adrienne Adams. She's someone who cares about economic justice, healthcare justice, and public safety. She saw firsthand what my district and her district in this city has endured as a result of COVID, and who has stood in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in labor on issues from worker protection for fast food employees to healthcare for airport workers. She is the first woman to represent her district, and today she will become the first African-American speaker to lead the most diverse body the city has elected. And she's, of course, from my beloved uh, Queens, New York, and I am so proud to nominate and really stand next to someone who has just been uh, truly a great friend, uh, someone who uh, we've always leaned on each other's shoulders through some tough times in the past four years, uh, and I stand with you and support you 100%. Adrian, congratulations on this historic uh, win. And I think we are a better city when we have leaders like Adrian Adams. Uh, and so I'd like to nominate Adrian Adams as the next uh, speaker of the city council. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Hearing no further candidates, I now close the nominations and direct the clerk to call the roll. Council members, when your name is called, please state the name of the nominee you are voting for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Abreu. Emphatic I for Adrian Adams. Congratulations. Thank you. Adams. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ariola. Thank you. Aviles. I, Adams. Thank you. Ayala. Adam. Thank you. Baron. Councilmember Barron? Yes, Mr. Chair, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. A majority of this body has been described as more progressive and people oriented than previous councils. At the outset, there were hopes of a paradigm shift to move from being under the dictates of the mayor, political county bosses, union leaders, and real estate magnates in exchange for getting preferred committee chairs. Unfortunately, the tradition process prevailed. We must be the voice and conscious of the people to protect them from a greedy capitalist system that produces and creates poverty, unemployment, mass incarceration, homelessness, and a myriad of 
oppressive racial and economic issues, especially during this pandemic. We must be the conscience for the people. We have to stand during the budget process for the people, the legislative process for the people. We must stand strong. Governor Hochul, Mayor Adams, and soon to be Speaker Adams are cut from the same political cloth. You'll see they prioritize police and criminal justice reforms, they say, but support the racist, oppressive NYPD with more money and more police, which is not the answer to crime. Mayor Adams wants to bring back Giuliani's racist street crime unit and support the real estate industry, gentrify projects supporting it, privatizing public housing and education, and wants to bring back solitary confinement. With the support of this speaker and the governor, he will turn black and brown communities into a police state. The answer to crime is not police containment. It is economic development, job creation, and a multi-billion dollar poverty initiative. We say jobs, not jails. Finally, and I'm finished, stay woke. Don't be lulled to sleep or inaction because of black faces in high places. We need independent, bold black leadership that stands for the people over the party. We don't want a change in the complexion we want to change in the direction of leadership which this city is going. So please, support the people over your personal ambition. Power to the people, forward ever, backward never, I vote no. Borelli. I'd like to disassociate myself with the comments that were just made by my predecessor, by the person before me, and vote emphatically uh, for Adrian Adams, and I congratulate her. Councilmember Barron, can you clarify the name of the candidate that you were voting for? <laughs> I, I am voting for none of the above. That's the name. Thank you. Botcher. With great joy, I vote for Adrian Adams. Brennan. I vote for Madam Adams. Thank you. Brewer. <coughs> Adrian Adams. Brooks Powers. Aye on Adrian Adams. Thank you. Come on. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, today, we are emerging from an era of a boys club style of backroom deals, bullying, and strong arming. It is a joy to say goodbye to that era. This is our first ever majority woman council. Practically half the members are women of color. It is only fitting that we elect the first ever black woman speaker. It was an honor to work with my colleagues to help secure this first historic win. Like many of my colleagues, I came here to change the way business is done in the council, to usher in an era of unprecedented transparency, accountability, and democratic fairness, to make our city a safer, more equitable place for all New Yorkers to live. I'm excited to work with our new speaker to make this vision a reality. I want to applaud her for her bold stances in favor of just cause employment protections and basement apartment legalization, in support of robust violence intervention programs, and in opposition to solitary confinement. I can't wait to work on these and other shared priorities with her and my colleagues. This is a body with great diversity, ideological diversity, geographic diversity, and diversity of identities. And I know Adrian recognizes that our diversity is our strength. I have no doubt that our body, even across lines of ideological difference, will accomplish great things together under her leadership. I proudly cast my vote for Madam Speaker, Queen's own and representative of the neighborhood I grew up in, Richmond Hill, Adrian Adams. I vote aye. Thank you. Carr. Adams. De La Rosa. Emphatically, Adrian Adams. Congrats, Madam Speaker. Dinowitz. Uh, I'm proud to vote for Adrian Adams. <laughs> Farias. 
permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Today is a historical day. And I'm proud to be voting for Councilmember Adrian Adams as our bodies and New York City's first black woman city council speaker and my soror of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority E Incorporated. I am ecstatic that the council not only has a female majority, but also a speaker that represents the historic change of this moment for our city and for our communities. I look forward to working with Speaker Adrian Adams, and with that, it is my honor to vote aye for Speaker Adrian Adams. Thank you. Feliz. Proud and privileged to vote for Adrian Adams to be our next speaker, and I congratulate her on making history right here in the great city of New York. And I also want to congratulate the women and the women of color as well in this body who are also making history. Thank you. Thank you. Gennaro. Mr. City Clerk, I wish to speak on my vote. Permission granted. I am delighted to cast my vote for Adrian <laughs> Adams to be our next speaker. This council will face unprecedented challenges from COVID to the climate, public safety <clears throat> to public housing, and from, and from students to seniors. And we need a speaker who can lead this new council and this city to the dawn of progress, equality, opportunity, and prosperity. Uh, Councilmember Adams is that special and aspirational leader and bridge builder behind whom this diverse council can and will coalesce to advance the dreams of millions and will transform this city into a beacon of hope and possibility. May God bless our new speaker and this council. Thank you. Gutierrez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I'm honored to share this historic moment with my colleagues here at the council. I wish I could have been there in person to share this hopeful energy and camaraderie as we elect the first black woman, a speaker to move this body forward. We have so much work to do for tenants, for immigrants, for our schools, for workers, for new moms and for moms, and for so many more of our communities. I'm filled with hope and equally with urgency to support Adrian Adams to be this council's leader and next speaker, who I know will work to unite and lead this council in building a stronger, healthier, and transformative city for all New Yorkers. Palante, Adrian. Thank you. Hanif. I, Adrian Adams. Thank you. Hanks. With purpose and intention. Adrian Adams, I. Holden. I proudly vote for Adrian Adams. Thank you. Hudson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. As one of the first two openly gay black women ever elected to the New York City Council, along with my colleague Kristen Richardson Jordan, <coughs> I'm honored to make history once again by voting for the first black speaker of the New York City Council today. So much of our existence is deemed impossible. We are to this, to that. Today I want to remind you that we, women, black women, Latinx women, queer women, trans women, disabled women, immigrant women, and short women. <laughs> we are enough. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. It's my honor to cast my vote for you. Thank you. Thank you. I felt that. I felt that. Jordan. No, I vote firmly no. We need more than symbolic representation. Joseph. I for Adrian Adams. Councilmember Jordan, can you name the nominee that you were voting for? No. Thank you. Kagan. Can I explain my vote? Permission, Permission granted. Thank you. As a proud immigrant, as a proud Russian Jewish refugee, as a proud New Yorker, as a proud American, I believe that this body should represent all New Yorkers, regardless of the race, nationality, etc. I strongly believe that Adrian Adams will be Speaker of New York City Council and she will represent all New Yorkers. So definitely I for Adrian Adams. Thank you. Krishnan. 
Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. As one of the first two South Asians ever elected to the city council in the history of New York City, along with my colleague Shahana Hanif, I am so proud to cast my first vote in the city council for the first African American speaker of the New York City Council, Adrian Adams. It is no secret that we are facing a crisis of epic proportions and systemic injustice, from public health to housing to immigrant rights, to name a few. We need bold action and bold leadership. And I know that Adrian Adams is exactly that leader who will fight every day to bring us together to rebuild our city so it works for everyone. I am proud to support you, Madam Speaker. I look forward to working with you. Congratulations. Thank you. Lee. Enthusiastic, excited to vote for Adrian Adams. <laughs> Thank you. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Today I'm proud to cast my vote <coughs> for the first African American and the third woman to be the speaker of the New York City Council. It's been a long and difficult road to get to this point, but we made it here. Her ascension to the <coughs> position marks a major victory for black and brown communities. Her election is a push through the glass and metal ceilings. Her win ushers the legislative body into a new <coughs> era of leadership while it faces some of the greatest challenges ahead to protect and to provide all New Yorkers. Under Speaker Adams' leadership, I am confident that we will focus our actions on the people who keep New York City running, women. From maternal health to pay equity and access to resources, the women of New York City have allies in this council and a champion in Speaker Adrian Adams. I look forward to working in partnership with you, Speaker Adams, and this diverse body, and this diverse body to ensure we continue to champion legislation and policies that advance our city forward. I vote for Adrian Adams. Thank you. Marte. I, pr I proudly vote aye for Adrian Adams. Congratulations. Mealy. Councilmember Mealy. I vote aye on for Madam Adams, and I'm looking forward to working with her. Thank you. Menon. I have permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, in this historic moment, I am so thrilled to support Adrian Adams as our next speaker. From her time chairing Community Board 12 in Queens, to becoming the first woman elected to represent her council district, to becoming our city's first historic African-American speaker, we owe it to the people to elect a strong and independent woman and inspirational leader such as Adrian to lead us in making decisions that affect New Yorkers' lives. I also want to say that electing the first ever mother to be speaker is a momentum occasion as we have someone who truly understands the needs of our city's children, of working parents, and working families across our city. As the city's former census director, I was able to see firsthand Adrian's ability to bring people together towards a common purpose and tonight communities really throughout New York City. I so look forward to working with Speaker Adams to have a city council that makes a positive impact for all New Yorkers and brings back a strong and equitable recovery for all. So with deep admiration and congratulations to our new speaker, who I know will be such a strong and effective leader, I proudly cast my vote for Adrian Adams as our speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. I proudly vote for Adrian Adams for speaker. Thank you. Narcisse. <coughs> Permission Hello? granted. Thank you. It's an immense pleasure to be part of this historic day. While I know the phenomenal women who are electing speaker today hails from Queens, as a Brooklyn girl, I want to take a moment to salute another queen hailing from the borough of Kings, whose shoulders we stand on. Councilwoman Mary Pinkett, who served in this body from 1974 to 2001, making history as the first black New York City councilwoman. She's smiling down on us today. Councilwoman Pinkett made quite the crack in the 
proverbial um, glass ceiling, and we should not let this historic day fade into history without honoring her legacy. Today, I joined this legislative body, 31 women strong to make history as we take a sledgehammer to that same glass ceiling. Speaker Adams, just like Councilwoman Pinkett, you will make history as the first black speaker of New York City Council. As a fierce advocate, I'm confident that you will be a pivotal force, a catalyst for change, and a voice of the voiceless. I love the city. I love my people. I love my community. And I love the 46th Council District, which is why today I proudly cast my vote for Councilwoman Adrian E. Adams to be the next speaker of the New York City Council. Thank you. Nurse. Aye for Adams. Thank you. OC. Uh, it's pronounced OSE and permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. <laughs> With a majority of women in this council, it is only fitting for a woman and a black woman at that to lead the city out of darkness and into greatness. As an elected that has condemned the return of solitary confinement with great honor, I vote for Adrian Adams as our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Paladino. I, Adrian Adams. Thank you. Powers. Very big eye for Adrian Adams for speaker. Thank you. Rustler. Enthusiastic eye for Adrian Adams. Riley. Permission to display my vote? Permission granted. Today signifies a critical mark for the city of New York. In addition to being the first meeting of the year for New York City Council, we unified to create a substantially diverse and women-led council. An official congratulations to our New York City Council Speaker Adrian Adams, the first African-American to achieve this destination. I know that our city will thrive under your leadership and I look forward to working with you and your administration to enhance the lives of not only the residents of District 12, but New Yorkers across our great city. Today is my fraternity's Founders Day, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, and I proudly vote aye for Councilwoman Adrienne Adams from Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Councilmember Adrienne Adams is not just a colleague, but a dear friend and partner. She is a leader who is ready to meet the moment and move this city forward. We've had many great moments, Adrienne. We've had the Council's Women's Caucus, where we made history in the fight for reproductive justice, in contentious committee meetings on local community issues, especially with my community where she stood poised and resolute, and in our commitment to fight for all people, black, Latino, Asian, LGBTQ+, people with disabilities, and shorties everywhere. <laughs> I am grateful for the opportunity to have witnessed Councilmember Adams' leadership. I believe in her ability to hold the mayor accountable. I am confident in her ability to uplift the independence of this body. Adrian, we spoke many times over the years, and especially the last few months, frankly and openly. You're an incredible person. You've always had my back. I will always have yours. Thank you for believing in me and all of the things that we will achieve together and as a body, and for bringing hope and determination to our city in the bright times and during the challenging times ahead. I am proud to vote aye in favor of, yes, the city's first black woman speaker, but a smart and talented woman who has earned the right to be there. I vote aye for Adrienne Adams. Thank you. Salamanca. I vote aye for Adrienne Adams. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Sanchez. Permission to explain my vote? 
Permission granted. Thank you. I am so proud to be casting my vote today uh, in this historic New York City Council for Speaker Adrian Adams. I first met Adrian about seven years ago when she was the chair, the inaugural chair of the Jamaica Now Leadership Council. And I was a member, trekking about an hour and a half on the subway multiple times a week to Jamaica, Queens from District 14. It is in that capacity, Madam Speaker, that I was able to observe your zealousness for community, your commitment, your passion, and the way that you ask the right questions and hold agencies accountable. I know that you are firmly rooted in community. I know that Speaker Adrian Adams will firmly help us make sure that we are rooted in ours, that we are supporting the people that we were elected to represent. And with that, I am so proud I, Pierina Ana, Miguelina Sanchez Flores, Peguero Duarte, from the Dominican Republic, I am so proud to cast my vote for Adrian Adams as speaker. Congratulations, Adam. Thank you. Shulman. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. We have a lot of history in this room today and in this council, and there are a lot of firsts. Uh, there are, um, first of all, we're the first majority female-led council, not only in the city, but in this country, uh, which is totally amazing. We have a lot of firsts. We have moms here. We have people of different ethnicities. We have, I'm very proud to be the first Jewish lesbian to be elected to the city council. Uh, thank you. We have, we, we are facing the worst public health crisis of our lifetime. And it has exacerbated the inequities that we already have existing in this city. We have kids that need to go to school in a safe environment. We have seniors that need to, to who are, feel isolated, that need to feel that they are cared for, and also that they can stay in the communities in which they are living and thrive in. And we need to make sure that we have the medical and healthcare resources that we need um, for everyone in the city, and we don't. Our hospital capacity is terrible, and it's something that really needs to be worked on. And I will tell you, so to meet, we have unprecedented challenges. To meet the unprecedented challenges faced by this body and the city, we need a leader with strength, wisdom, and compassion. And that is why I am here to vote for my queen sister, Adrian Adams, as the first female African-American speaker of the New York City Council. Thank you. Stevens. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. This is a historical moment, and as a proud black woman advocate, I am proud and grateful for the opportunity to vote for my sister, my friend, Adria Adams, I send you nothing but love and light and congratulations. Thank you. Um. Absolutely, I for Adrian Adams. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. I look forward to working together. Thank you. Velasquez. I say I to me and Nana. Adrian Adams. Okay, thank you. Vernikov. I for Adrian Adams. <coughs> Congratulations on this huge milestone. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Williams. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. So I did not prepare any fancy remarks, but I felt it necessary to say how honored I am to vote for the first African-American woman, black woman speaker for the New York City Council, a neighbor, um, a D9 sister, a Southeast Queen sister, Southeast Queens is really in the house. And as I always say, South Side, we outside and we're here in City Council. Um, and I've also said this before, um, and I've, I've said it personally to uh, Speaker Adams is, you know, God really has the plan. Um, and I, I'm 
consistently reminded of Jeremiah 29, 11, which is for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And in the end, um, that's where I center everything. It's a higher power and you're here for a reason in this critical time that we're in as a city. And you are the person that will lead us um, into the future and into prosperity. So I proudly uh, cast my vote for uh, Speaker Adrian Adams. Thank you. Council Member Wan. Adrian Adams, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Jaeger. Mr. President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Wouldn't have it any other way, would we? Um, uh, you know, when uh, I, I've made this speech before on this floor, when your name begins with Y uh, over your life, you learn two things very quickly. Number one is that uh, everything's been said, but not everybody said it. And number two is make it quick because you're standing between your friends and the door. So I'll try to do both. Um, four years ago, 11 of us were elected on the same day, and uh, we bonded pretty quickly uh, as a class of freshmen amongst giants, and that's how I always looked at it. But there was really one who I think stood out um, more, than, more than all of us, and someone who's a woman of compassion and wisdom, of common sense, reason, and good judgment, and someone who bore the battle scars of a life of service and sacrifice for her community. The bond we quickly uh, shared was one of born of similarities of the neighborhoods we serve. And you know that we share these similarities might surprise a lot of people, but if you're a lifelong New Yorker like we are, you learn early on that we need not look the same to believe the same, to dream the same, to think the same, uh, to share the same. I know in our new speaker, New Yorkers will find someone who cares about every neighborhood in our city. New Yorkers will find a speaker who knows that every neighborhood needs clean and safe schools, clean and safe streets, a vibrant economic engine, and the confidence that one can safely walk down the streets of any neighborhood no matter where you live, how you look, or how you dress. New Yorkers will find a speaker who believes in collaborative, bottom-up government, and who believes in partnership, not combat, with our colleagues on the other side of this building. New Yorkers will find a speaker who abhors divide and conquer politics. Someone who judges people for the content of their character, as we were taught so many years ago to do. New Yorkers will find a speaker who loves our city and its people, all of our people. And I have a clock, so for those reasons and so many more that I can't say at this time, um, but I'll have time over the next two years to say it, I cast my vote for Councilmember Adams. By a vote of 49 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and zero abstentions, the Council has duly elected the Speaker of the City Council for the term commencing January 1st, 2022, and ending December 31st, 2023, Councilmember Adrian Adams. I promise you I'm going to keep myself together. <laughs> Thank you.
New York City Council members, Whew. class of 2022, you did this. This is for you, your vote, your speaker, your commitment, my commitment to you. I applaud you. I thank God for this moment, and I want to recognize some special guests who are here with us today. I acknowledge former speakers of these great chambers and this great city council. Council members, Corey Johnson. And the first woman of color to stand here in these chambers to lead it and represent it, former speaker Melissa Mark Viverito. I also acknowledge former council members who worked and led in these great chambers. Council member I, Danique Miller. Former Council Member Elizabeth Crowley. <laughs> Former Council Member Mark Weprin. <laughs> Former Council Member and now Comptroller of the City of New York, Brad Lander. <laughs> Former Council Member and now Queensborough President Donovan Richards, Jr. <laughs> Council member, the first African American woman to lead the Boogie Down Brunch, Vanessa Gibson. <laughs> Former Deputy Brooklyn Borough President Ingrid Lewis Martin. My soul. My congressman that leads with such distinction. He is the one and only Congressman Gregory Meeks. And I'd also like to acknowledge Deputy Mayor Sheena Wright. First, my gratitude goes to my pastor, the one who leads a flock of thousands at my church and Council Member Brooks, <laughs> Brooks Powers Church as well. My pastor, the one and only Reverend Dr. Elaine McCollins Flake. <laughs> of the Greater Allen AME Cathedral for your beautiful prayer, you and Pastor Floyd Harold Flake are the reason that I am standing here today. I love you. Thank you. Now, many of you know that I am a woman of God whose faith has especially been my rock for over two very difficult years of my life. I know many of you are people of faith as well. Let us turn to it and find solace in the years ahead. I wouldn't be here standing here today without the support of my family, my husband, Joseph J. Adams, <laughs> our wonderful children, one of whom is representing the brood today, Giselle Adams Kubinick. <laughs> and we also stand here representing our beautiful grandchildren. Thank you for always being there for me. I also acknowledge my sister, Tracy Edie Gaffey, and her daughter, Michaela Gaffey, my brother-in-law, Julian Adams, and of course, the one who holds me together, Tamar Ogburn. Thank you all for always being there for me. Through thick and thin, standing by my side, you mean the world to me, and words can't express how much I love you. 
One of my mentors is in the room today. I believe she's here. She is none other than the one who paved the way for me and so many other African-American women to both lead and succeed, the one and only Dr. Hazel N. Dukes, president of the NAACP New York State Conference. I'd also like to recognize another mentor. I don't know if he is here today, but I will recognize him, one who has been a stalwart for change and justice in New York City, the Reverend Al Sharpton. It is no secret that I am a proud life member of the National Action Network and grateful for his leadership over the years. Next, I want to acknowledge some lions of the labor movement, Queen's own Kyle Bragg of 32 BJ. I'd also re like to recognize Henry Garrido of District Council 37. Dennis Trainer of CWA District 1, and Pat Kane of the New York State Nurses Association. You all fight day in and day out, not only for the hundreds of thousands who stand behind you, but for the rights of all workers in this city. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Labor Strong. Now, the backbone of any council member, of course, is their staff. The dedicated public servants who serve the constituents of our community. To my district team, Jamal Wilkerson. <laughs> Catherine Mooney. Benjamin Fang. Brendan Jackson. Shafina Bach, Ty Hankerson, and the one and only Nikki Smith. I thank you all for leading the great 28 so proudly, and I thank you for everything that you do. I also want to thank the staff of the New York City Council for ensuring the government continues to run throughout this pandemic. I especially want to applaud your work to make today's charter meeting happen. Thank you, staff of the New York City Council. And of course, I want to thank my fellow speaker candidates, Diana, Gail, Justin, Keith, Francisco, and Carlina. You all are brilliant public servants. You all represent such different pockets of the city, all bringing a unique experience and vision to this race. We all ran for speaker out of our love for New York City, and out of this love, we ultimately came together. We realized the stakes are too high for us to operate as separate islands. Instead, we must all work as one. Thank you all for putting your faith in me. Thank you. To my returning colleagues, Eric, Kevin, Oswald, Raphael, Tiffany, James, Bob, Selvina, Kalman, Farah, Ina, David, and Joe, whether you've been here for four years or a few weeks, we are now the upperclassmen who our colleagues will call upon for guidance, so let's be there to support them. <laughs> To Christopher, Eric, Julie, Sean, Kristen, and Carmen, the incoming members of the Manhattan delegation, you are all bright leaders who represent such rich, diverse communities, and I can't wait to see what you're going to accomplish. To Marjorie, Pierina, Althea, and Amanda, my new members from the Boogie Down Bronx, you represent the future of this body, women, who are ready to lead on day one. You're ready, you're ready, you're ready. To Camila from Staten Island, the sister from Staten. Oh yes. <laughs> I'm so excited for the amazing things that you're going to do for your district. To Lincoln, Jennifer, Crystal, Chi, Sandy, Alexa, Shahana, Rita, Darlene, Charles, Mercedes, and Ari, 
I look forward to working with you all very closely to meet the needs of your Brooklyn communities head on. And Sandra, Linda, Shaker, Julie, Natasha, Lynn, Vicky, and Joanne, let's show this city what Queens is all about. You know, we might come from different neighborhoods, but at the end of the day, we are one big family that always gets the job done. My friends, history has its eyes on this city council. We meet here today as the most diverse council in history, led by the first African-American speaker. Woo. While this is a moment to celebrate this milestone, we must realize that we are here because New York is at the crossroads of multiple crises, each one competing for our full attention. The cracks in our economic and public health systems widened to massive gaps during the pandemic. The people who elected us demand their government take action. They're exhausted as they stagger into year three of this pandemic. They want to feel safe and they want to be treated with respect and dignity. They want to work in good jobs that allow them to live without fear of going hungry or losing their home. I have served with several of you. I have spoken with all of you. I hear you. I believe we can meet this moment with a clear head and a unified voice. We can show the rest of the nation that people from all walks of life, on all points of the political spectrum, can listen to one another, deliver solutions, and do what is best for New York City. That begins by coming together to overcome this awful pandemic. More than 35,000 of our relatives, friends, and neighbors have been taken by this virus. While reading every single name here today would be impossible, we can offer them a brief moment of silence. Let's give them that moment right now. Thank you. It is in their name that we will overcome this latest wave driven by the Omicron variant. It is for their sake that we ensure this city provides fair and reliable access to testing, vaccines, and boosters, no matter if it's in New Dorp or New Lots, Riverdale or Rosedale. I haven't forgotten the horror stories of, of that some of you have shared with me over the last three weeks. Constituents in a mad rush to find a COVID test, as if it's the days before the vaccine all over again. We will work together as partners to correct the failures of this latest surge. And it's in the memory of those we have lost we have just, that we have a just recovery. That means addressing the healthcare inequities that caused communities of color to suffer the most from COVID, only to receive the least resources. Then we must build upon the lessons learned, especially when it comes to caring for our elderly loved ones. I know this is a top priority for so many of you, whether it's you, Crystal, caring for your mom, or Lynn, fighting your hardest to expand hospital capacity during the pandemic. Joanne, I know that you also have a firsthand experience with the healthcare system. Darlene, Christopher, and Sandra, I know you have thoughts about this as well. Nor did I forget what you said, Linda, Eric, and Shahana, about the strain that COVID has put on people's mental health. We will work together to not only address the long-term impacts of COVID-19, but also reimagine a better system of health and wellness for New Yorkers. As people return to go to work, go back to their favorite restaurants, or visit their neighborhood park, they need to feel safe safe from the virus, and safe from violence. This nation is living through a long overdue reckoning of racial justice. There have been far too many Ramarley Grahams, Eric Garners, and Akai Gurleys. 
a black man or woman should not have to fear that a broken taillight could quickly escalate into a death sentence. Enough is enough. At the same time, the fact is shootings have doubled in the last two years, another symptom of the pandemic that we must confront as a body. Gun violence is happening in Southeast Queens, in Central Brooklyn, and in the South Bronx. These are black and brown communities that want to see a police presence. The council members of these neighborhoods have made this clear to me. As the former public safety chair and a council member for one of these communities, I understand where you're coming from. I heard you and I felt your pain. I realize the nuance of this issue and the need for better policing, but we want these police officers to treat people with dignity and respect. As speaker, I will continue to listen to each of you on this issue, hear what your constituents have personally lived through, and find the right balance of public safety and fairness. Too many young lives have been ruined on both ends of a gun. One of the best ways to stop guns from flowing into our streets is to provide good paying jobs and workforce training instead. The pandemic devastated so many families who already struggle to get by. Those of us lucky enough to have jobs that allow us to work from home weren't creating the economic activity that bodega owners, restaurateurs, and the hospital industry depended on. This crisis has led to an estimated 1.5 million New Yorkers, including one in four children, right now struggling with food insecurity. Selvina, Althea, and Sandy, I heard you on this. Rita, Eric, and Julie, I heard you when you raised how the crisis of homelessness has worsened in the last two years. We will make this a priority. I know that the parents of young children, like Raphael, Kevin, Shaker, and Carmen, struggle to balance a full-time career with being a full-time parent, especially in this new capacity. The concerns of your constituents about access to safe, quality childcare are the same ones my children have, my grandchildren have, your children have. This issue might not be new because it's the same I had when I was raising my children. It may not be new, but it's not getting any easier either, especially as thousands of college-educated New Yorkers are either underpaid or underemployed. The richest city in the world should be able to provide quality childcare to every parent, and guardian. This council will work to reverse the economic slide brought by the pandemic, and we will do it through the principles of the labor movement, which has always put workers first. I want to once again thank the members of Labor Strong Coalition specifically for recognizing the value of union labor at this pivotal moment and for fighting to preserve it. I grew up in Hollis, Queens, the daughter of union workers who strove to ensure that our family would have the opportunities they never dreamed of. My father spent 14 hours a day out of the house as a proud teamster. My mother worked for two decades as a correction officer serving the city that she loved with distinction and retiring as a captain in that department. They taught me the value of fair pay for a hard day's work, and I think that's something we all can agree on. Our recent history through this pandemic and the issues it punctuated has shifted the path of where we must go. This is the job ahead of us. My leadership team will be announced in the coming days. I can say today that part of it will include Diana Ayala as our deputy speaker. It will include Keith Powers as our majority leader.
And to add even more history today, it will include Sylvina Brooks Powers as Majority Whip. I am so confident together we will get the job done. Members of this city council might disagree on many things. And as a former community board chair, I know too well that disagreement is both inevitable and healthy. What might be good for the Upper West Side might not necessarily make sense for Garrison Beach. But I know that we will overcome any small differences for the good of this city. That's where our heart lies. Because of the beauty of this particular council, a true snapshot of New York City in 2022 is that our diversity will make us stronger. For the first time ever, this legislative body will have a majority of women serving in these chambers. With citywide leadership overwhelmingly male, it's crucial that women not only have a seat at the table, but we lead the way out of this crisis and toward a fair and inclusive recovery. Representation matters, not just because it will inspire the next generation of women leaders, but also because it will drive how we govern moving forward. That's why it's so important that we all come from different cultural, geographical, and professional backgrounds, no matter what might have brought our ancestors or in immediate family to New York, they all chose this city because it embodies hope and it represents a better life. As a council, we will draw on our own lived experiences and wealth of knowledge to help inform, shape, and develop the policies that impact everyday New Yorkers. We will put our collective minds together to craft an equitable budget pass impactful legislation, and provide meaningful oversight of every city agency. New Yorkers have placed their trust in each and every one of us, and it's our responsibility to work together and deliver the future that they deserve. We cannot thrive as a city unless we address quality of life issues, what might seem like the simplest things like clean streets and confronting noise complaints. I was listening, Chi. Amanda and Sandy, I was listening. These things can make a world of difference to a neighborhood. And as I stand here before you today, humbled by the faith you put in me, I can't think about, I can't help but think about my own unconventional journey that led me to this very moment. As the first woman elected to represent my district in Southeast Queens, which I proudly call the Great 28, I'm no stranger to fighting just to have my own voice heard but I never gave up. I never stopped trying, and eventually, I was proud to break through that particular glass ceiling. From Bayside High School, to Spelman College, to some of the nation's largest companies, my path was anything but straightforward. I was a flight attendant, a child development instructor, and a corporate trainer for Fortune 500 companies. But after decades in the private sector, I knew I was destined for another purpose, a life of service. My heart was always with the community that raised me, and I knew that I had to give back and make a difference for the sake of our children and grandchildren who come after us. That's why, as chair of my local community board, I worked with neighbors and civic leaders who may have had differing viewpoints and ideas, but we all recognized the common objective of making our community a better place to live, work, and raise a family. It made me appreciate that our collective contributions must be weighed through what's good for an entire city. When I was elected to the city council four years ago, I promised my constituents that I would not only bring our fair share of resources back to Southeast Queens, but also provide the type of leadership that would make them proud. To the residents of Jamaica, Richmond Hill, Rochdale Village and South Ozone Park, if you're listening out there, I hope to continue to make you proud every single day. <laughs> yes, and like so many New Yorkers, I lost both of my beloved parents. 
within the span of a year during this pandemic. Although I miss them very much and wish they could have been here to share this historic moment with me, my sister and I know they're smiling down on me with tremendous pride and joy. Their sacrifice and determination shaped who I am today, and for that, I will always be grateful. I also remain thankful for my late uncle, Kermit Eady, as president of the CEO of the Black United Fund of New York. He worked to bridge communities of color with the charitable donations meant to build them up. Throughout the mid to late 1980s, Kermit Eady changed economic empowerment for the African American community. He taught me many things, but most of all, he never stopped fighting for your community's fair share. I stand on the shoulders of giants who have come before me. Lower Manhattan's own Frances Perkins, who nearly 90 years ago became the first female United States Cabinet Secretary. Shirley Chisholm, who in 1968 became the first black woman elected to Congress and just four years later became the first black candidate to run for a major party's nomination for President of the United States. I must also mention our very own Christine Quinn and Melissa Mark Viverito, who proved that women can not only lead the city council, but they can do so by standing up for the most vulnerable among us. Attorney General Letitia, Tish James, someone very familiar to this room, who went on to become our first black statewide elected official. And right now, 150 miles away, our state's first female governor, Kathy Hochul, is delivering her first state of the state address. I must also acknowledge two other historic moments specific to this body that paved the way for me to stand here today. First in 1941, Adam Clayton, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. was elected as the first black member of the city council. <laughs> then as mentioned by council member Narcisse in 1973, Mary Pinkett of Brooklyn was elected as the first black woman ever to serve in the New York City Council. And now, today, January 5th, 2022, I am beyond honored to be the first African-American speaker from the Borough of Queens to represent New York City Council. Sit down, y'all. <laughs> it's been a long and arduous road, but I am truly blessed to be here in this chamber, in this position, to serve all New Yorkers during this time of great need. I'm confident, I'm so confident, colleagues, that this work that we do will accomplish what we've been tasked to do by those we represent and that is getting New York back on its feet and fulfilling its promise as the safest, fairest, and best city in the world. We're gonna do that together. And before I conclude today, I wanna to share with you one of my guiding principles that has motivated me to get through the hardest times of my life some of you have heard me say this many times, Vanessa Gibson. 
every morning, every morning, I wake up on purpose with a purpose, and that is to serve the people of this great city. We will realize that purpose as a united city council, and I look forward to achieving it together with every last one of you. Thank you, colleagues. We're going to run this, this chamber together. We're going to do this. 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 Thank you very much. Petitions and communications. M, excuse me, M3, nomination and election of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. I make a motion to elect the following <coughs> council members as members of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. As temporary chair of this committee, I nominate council member Sylvina Brooks Powers. I also nominate council members Gail Brewer, Camilla Hanks, <coughs> Crystal Hudson, Rita Joseph, Shaker Krishnan, <coughs> Daryl Lewis, Keith Powers, Rafael Salamanca, Marjorie Velasquez, and Julie Wan as members of the Rules Committee. I will now ask for a roll call vote on the motion to adopt these nominations. Will the Kirk please call the roll? Abreu. I vote aye. Ariola. I vote aye. Aviles. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Councilmember Barron. Oh, I abstain. Thank you. <laughs> Borelli. Aye. Botcher. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Brewer. Yes. Brooks Powers. <coughs> Aye. Caban. Aye. Carr. Aye. De La Rosa. Aye. Dinowitz. Aye. Farias. Aye. Feliz. I vote aye. Gennaro. Aye. Gutierrez. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Hi, Hazel. Thank you. Hanif. Aye. Hanks. Aye. Holden. I vote aye. Hudson. Aye. Jordan. Aye. Joseph. Aye. Kagan. Aye. Krishnan. Aye. Lee. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Marte. Aye. Mealy. Aye. Thank you. Menon. Council Member Menon. All right, we'll come back. Councilmember Moya. I would I. Narcisse. Aye. Thank you. Nurse. Aye. Jose. I would I. Thank you. Paladino. I vote I. Thank you. Powers. I vote I. Wrestler. Riley. I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. I vote aye. Salamanca. 
I vote aye. Sanchez. Aye. Shulman. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Ung. Aye. Velasquez. Aye. Vernikov. Aye. Williams. Aye. Juan. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Councilmember Menon. Aye. Thank you. Speaker Adams. I vote aye. By a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention, the motion is adopted. M M4, designation of minority leader. After a duly convened meeting of the Republican Conference, Council Member Joseph Borelli was elected minority leader of the City Council. Mr. Minority, minority Leader, would you like to make a statement? Thank you, everybody. It was a nice round of applause, but it was no Vanessa Gibson round of applause. <laughs> people, mu people must like you. They went crazy for you. <laughs> um, the best part about speaking at this point in this meeting is that I get to be the first council member recorded on record referring to you as Madam Speaker. So Madam Speaker, congratulations. <laughs> well deserved, well deserved. I want to talk first to our new members, uh, the new folks who are joining us, and I'm talking to you not only as the minority leader of a Republican caucus, but also as someone who was elected in the fall of 2015, I get to bear the title of the Dean of the City Council. Um, for those of you who don't know, my office is in the back, and for you new members, it's a welcome place for you to come at any point and ask me anything. For the majority of you, if I say you're doing 100% the right thing, you should probably change direction do something else. But I want to <laughs> certainly be honest uh, and, and have my door and my ear open to all of you. The, the desks and seats you now occupy uh, are in a building that's over 200 years old. Uh, but it's essentially a baby when you compare it to how old our municipal government is. The year 1625 is emblazoned on our city seal. And it's not the year of our founding. People came here a couple of years before that. It's not the year of our first charter. That was in 1653. It's the year when the Dutch uh, East India Company made New Amsterdam the seat of the colonial government in their colonies. Shortly after that moment, seven people convened uh, as the first council of this city. Now we call it New York. But seven people convened. One of them actually shares a name with one of our current members, Brewer. The others are in Dutch and I can't pronounce them. The point I'm trying to make is that we're just temporary trustees of this legacy. And we're blessed because we'll be here, most of us, assuming you don't lose, uh, you'll be here in the 400th consecutive year of citizens of this city coming together in a building like this and making decisions for us. There's two paintings. Two paintings up there. Charles, I know you, you might have something to say. <laughs> These two people, Washington and Lafayette, went down in history for fighting the revolution and then governing a country. That country had only 2.5 million people. We have more people than that in Brooklyn, the borough that we collectively govern. Our modern city is 8.8 .8 million people. It's the largest in the US. I'm sure you Wikipedia that before you ran for office. But did you know that the MTA transports more people every single day than every other public transit system in the United States of America times two? Did you know that our city budget, now $100 billion, is larger than 47 states? It's larger than 170 countries. Our population is the same as Switzerland, but our city spends about $150 million more. Our NYPD has more men and women in uniform than the Royal Navy. It alone spends more than the entire budget of North Korea. The FDNY, largest in the country, you probably knew that already, 
but it's also the largest pre-hospital medical care provider in the world. Each of our districts alone, in comparison, are larger than the cities of Charleston, Pasadena, West Palm Beach, and Savannah. And with Savannah, for those of you who know me as my second favorite city, you're represented by five city council members, a county legislator, and a mayor. In New York, they just got you. Your people just have you. The responsibility for governing your neighborhood and having such a large role falls on us individually. Now, even larger cities don't put as much responsibility on their city councils. If you lived in Tokyo, for example, Tokyo places its 9.4 million people who live within its city proper into 23 different special districts, each having a mayor and city council. In London, there are 32 boroughs where the borough councils make all that decision. I'm telling you this only because I want you to be keenly aware of the gravity of your job. There are a lot of people relying on you, and they're gonna rely on you for the next two and, and four years, and, and for most of you, eight. Getting back to Switzerland for a moment, a country of equal population and near equal budget, Switzerland has 26 cantons or provinces, each having its own identifiable regional cult uh, culture and customs. There's four languages, um, each of it spoken depending on where you happen to be. As Council Member Caban pointed out, our city has so much of that same diversity around it. More, more. But yet in political terms, Switzerland has four major political parties, 10 minor parties, and 17 regional parties. Switzerland has a broad spectrum of voices, but to be honest, sometimes in our city, our political voice tends to be a bit monotone. Our job uh, is to offer a competing view. Our job is to talk about taxpayers when you talk about spending. Our job is to talk about drivers when you talk about banning cars. You get the picture. I won't go into everything. And that brings us again to our minority conference, five members who represent our own constituencies, like you all, uh, but also for the 28% of New Yorkers who do vote Republican in elections, and the 565,000 registered Republicans in the city. Those folks do deserve a voice. And the tools we use are our voices, our podiums, our desks, our microphones, uh, and the things we say. Our opposition is not personal, and I hope you all realize that. It's not even political. It's more of a duty to present a different case uh, to the public. And Madam Speaker, I can say this wholeheartedly, we are eager to work with you and not against you uh, because it does take pushing and pulling to make the proverbial sausage. So thank you all, good luck uh, this term, and God bless. M5, designation of minority whip. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M6, designation of deputy speaker. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M7, designation of majority leader. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M8, designation of majority whip. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. I will now call on Speaker Adrian Adams to close today's stated meeting. The charter meeting of January 5, 2022 is hereby adjourned. Recording stopped.